Welcome to the Pyramid Insider, I'm Tyler Patner, and today we have what might be my new favorite deer hunting PCP air rifle, the Umarex Air Javelin Pro. Now the Air Javelin came out earlier this year in 2022, uh, and really was an interesting take on the Air Javelin CO2 rifle that Umarex came out with a few years back. Uh, this is a PCP version, a little bit more powerful with some nice upgraded features here, but the price is very attractive for those of you looking to aero sling. This is only $300 or thereabouts, uh, and it is a really, really fun gun and an effective hunting tool if you know what you're doing. Now, let's dive into the details and take a closer look at the specs of the Air Javelin Pro. Now, before we get to those details, just have to do our normal YouTube reminder. They are uh, limiting the reach of our channel quite heavily. So please, if you like the videos, you like the content, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. We know most of you are not. Uh, like the video, share the video with your friends if you think they need a little bit of uh, aero air gun in their life. And don't forget to comment down below. Let's continue the conversation there. Now, of course, the Air Javelin Pro, as I said before, is an aero slinger. You are gonna get three of these Umarex arrows. They're the same arrows that you use for the Air Javelin CO2 gun. These are more of a uh, crossbow bolt length. And of course, you can screw off those tips. They're relatively lightweight. This is just 170 grain arrow total with the tip. So not a ton of weight here. You're gonna definitely wanna add a broadhead to this. Give yourself a little bit more punch. Uh, I would go with a 100 grain unit, but you can go with 50 or 75s if you can find them. Uh, you just load it right onto the end of the barrel. It does not snap or lock into place, so just be aware of that. You're not gonna wanna load this until you're in the stand or in the blind and ready to go. Could drop out on you if you're walking through the woods or something like that. So just make sure it's nice and secure before you're ready to take a shot. Now the frame of this gun is largely polymer, nothing wrong with that, it's gonna be nice and durable for you. But as you can see, you've got a full length Picatinny rail that runs the top of the action at large. So you can mount anything you want on this. Uh, you, I've got a Hawk uh, crossbow scope mounted on this here, but you could put a red dot on it. I, you could accessorize this thing until your heart's content. And then even further, they've given you M-lock slots on both sides so you can further accessorize the gun as needed, which is pretty cool. Dropping down below, we do have our air cylinder. Now this is around 120 cc's and it fills to 4,500 PSI. Of course, it's a pretty high fill pressure, but they do rate this thing at about 25 shots per fill. So you certainly don't have to fill it that high. And here's the kicker, it's regulated. So you're gonna get consistent performance out of this, even if you don't have the ability to fill it all the way to 4,500, which is awesome to see. Again, for an inexpensive PCP gun, this is a lot of features packed in. On the end of the air cylinder, we have a quick disconnect fill fitting, which is nice to see as well. It makes filling this thing a breeze. And then we do have our fill pressure gauge on the other side. You've got some nice color coding in there to tell you 4,500 and then the regulated pressure is 1,500 PSI. So it'll cut off that green right there. So again, about 25 shots on a fill. We'll put it over the chronograph for you, of course. Uh, and one other thing I should mention about the air cylinder, there is a degassing port right here. So if you do need to let the air out for any reason, you go ahead, you give that a counterclockwise twist and you will vent all the air. Now moving back on the gun, the rest of the action is actually quite simple. Uh, you have a bolt action system, so once you have your arrow loaded, you're gonna go ahead and cock this back. Uh, pulling it all the way back cocks it, and then it returns forward like you see here. So it's cocked and ready to go. My only gripe with this system is that you don't quite know if it's cocked or not, because this always sits forward like that. Um, not a problem, just something you have to keep in your mind whether you've cocked the gun or not. Uh, the safety just down below here is a push button style safety, so it's safe when it's popped out on the right hand side. You push it on through, you get that red ring on the left hand side and you are hot and ready to go. Now the other cool thing about this, this bolt handle just screws in, it is ambidextrous. So for you lefties out there, if that's how you prefer to run the gun, you simply swap it over to the other side, you screw it in and you're good to go. Now dropping down to the trigger, the trigger is not amazing. I will be very honest with you guys in saying that. Uh, it does have a fair bit of creep to it, and it is certainly not the lightest thing in the world. But once you get used to it, it's certainly going to be hunting friendly. Uh, very similar to a lot of crossbow triggers out there, honestly. They're not made to be precision triggers, which for a shooter like myself is not the greatest thing in the world. But you can make do with it as long as you put your time in and get your practice in with it. It's not going to be a problem for you, but it is unadjustable, so you kind of have to live with it how it comes to you out of the box. 
move them back. You have a standard grip with some nice finger grooves there. Gonna fit hands of all sizes. Uh, shouldn't be a problem for any of you with bigger hands than I have, uh, or youth shooters as well. Should be just fine. And then moving back further, we have an AR style butt stock uh, that's got you know full adjustment there. This is about 35 inches or so fully extended. So a nice short package. I think you're running somewhere in the 30-ish range right here with it fully closed. So you've got a nice compact package that comes in at under five pounds. This thing, uh, like I said, for me, I wanna go deer hunting with this. It's light, easy to carry, easy to maneuver. This is gonna give you a lot of versatility in the field and should be very effective, assuming it's got the accuracy and lives up to the velocity claims. So let's head out to the range and see how it performs. So stretching the air javelin out to 45 yards, uh, great accuracy. These 170 grain bolts able to stack three of them into a sub one inch group at 45 yards. It doesn't get better than that with an arrow shooter. Uh, personally, I'm a little hesitant to go hunting with these at 170 grains. I want to throw a broadhead on here and see what it does or some different broadheads to test, but I don't really have anything right now that's kind of sized appropriately in that 50 to 75 grain range. Everything we have right now is 100 grains. So when we do get some more appropriate stuff, maybe we'll retest for you guys and show you that. But now let's head over to the chronograph and see how many shots we're getting and what kind of speed this thing's putting out. From a full 4,500 PSI fill down to the 1,500 PSI regulated pressure, we are getting the 25 shots that Umarex claims the Air Javelin Pro will do, which is great to see. A little bit of a larger extreme spread than I'd like to see out of a regged gun, but not a big deal, especially for sub 30 yard interactions that this gun's gonna be really great for from a hunting perspective. Now, we didn't hit the 370 feet per second mark from a velocity standpoint, but with an average velocity of 338 feet per second, it is still good enough to hunt with uh, an average energy of 43 foot pounds is certainly not bad. I would expect to get a little bit more when you put a heavier broadhead on the front of the arrow, but of course your velocity is gonna go down with that. So something to be aware of, you're gonna need to test it, uh, but pretty good results overall and a lot of good relatively consistent shots out of this gun. Again, something to be cognizant of, 170 grain arrow, you're gonna to wanna to add some weight to that to hunt anything larger than small or medium game with, but overall, pretty solid results out of the Air Javelin Pro. All right, let's wrap up the Air Javelin Pro. Like I said before, this is a really intriguing option for me. It's got a lot of nice features built in. One, I want to take hunting for medium and large game. A uh, very, very interesting offering from Umarex going with a PCP version of a relatively inexpensive arrow firing gun. I'm not sure if there was a demand there, but I got to say after I've used it, I want one. I'm taking this home with me. I'm probably going to take it hunting this year, uh, and you should consider it for the same. It's got plenty of accuracy right around one inch for all three shots at 45 yards out of an arrow firing gun. That is great to see. Good, solid, regulated performance. Not quite the velocity they rate it for, uh, but just you know, 15, 20 feet per second off of that 370 number. This thing's got plenty of power behind it to go hunting, and that's really what this is all about. You've got a light, compact package that is gonna be great in the woods. And at the end of the day, what more can you ask for for just 300 bucks? My only real gripes with this, again, you can't really tell when it's cocked and the trigger isn't amazing. Uh, it's actually quite a bit heavier than what I was expecting, but usable. You'll be able to get along with it if you put the time in and practice. But outside of that, the performance is stellar, and this is definitely one you need to check out if you're into arrow firing air guns. For The Insider, I'm Tyler Patner. As always, we'd appreciate it a ton if you subscribe to the channel. If you're not already, like and comment down below. Let us know what you thought of the Air Javelin Pro and if you're gonna pick up one for the woods this hunting season.